Hey, it's Black Sun Mike, and it is a Saturday night. I mean, Sunday night, sorry. And my guest tonight is Michael G. K. O. And uh, he has a movie that he just wrote and directed called The Hatred. I'm going to invite him in. That way we can get started with him and start talking to him. So, uh, everybody, uh, sit back, relax, watch the show. Enjoy the interview the uh fiction come up with Michael. Uh, it's gonna be an interesting uh, All right. Hey Michael. Can you hear me? How you doing? Are you there? I'm right here. <laughs> Ah, uh, you, you okay? I wish I was better. I wish I was better. I'm sick. Dad. I got to oh, talk man. The, the Dad. show must go. I don't know how that goes. Dad. Yeah. I'm getting, uh, you're going in and out, but you're good. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Perfect. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, great. So, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Just, uh, just after last night's uh, um, little uh, gathering that we had, you know, at Dark Delicacies, which was a big crowd, and uh, it was uh, uh, great to see all the uh, the actors there, you know, from the film. But we uh, we had a we had a pretty good crowd, and it was uh, Dell who who owns the place at Dark Delicacies, which is really a, a, a a big um, supporter of uh, horror films is uh, he's been there for many, many years. Mm. He and his wife, Sue put it on. It was a great moment for everybody. It's a little hesitation here. I don't know if you can hear it. I hope this works. Both of us. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you say that he has? Okay. There we go. I'm sorry. You say you had some pretty good food there. Uh, food? No. Uh, we had a big, uh, we had a big crowd, and um, you see if but I can get it. Don't he cook uh, like donuts? Stuff? Don't he make like chocolate baked donuts or something? No, <laughs> no, no. That was uh, it's not him. He doesn't make any food. He uh, actually provides. Oh, maybe he does. I don't. I don't know. I've never asked him. Mm. Well, anyway, well, I, I checked out his website, man. He looks like he's got a really cool thing going on there. He uh, has a lot of stuff there. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, like I said, he's been in support for um, the horror genre for many, many years. He's written a book, and, uh, um, you know, he's just a, he's a great guy. Cool, man. So, um, I guess we'll get started. Um I want to kind of go back to uh, when you were younger. What, mm -hmm. kind of, what kind of movies inspired you want to even write and direct a horror movie in later in life? Well, the first uh, um, the first film that I saw that really inspired me for uh, for this genre, well, for, for to be a filmmaker, was a movie by Nicholas Rogue called uh, The Walkabout, which was uh, a film that was from Australia. And it actually um, affected me as a young kid, you know, not in a negative way or anything like that. It just affected emotions of mine, you know, uh, watching it about this family. And, and I don't want to get into it. It's talk too much about what it was about. I think people should see it. But it, it's um, it's a movie. It's a movie that moved me. And um, by by that happening and going on to uh, to other films, you know, another film that I saw that. Uh, got me into the horror genre that inspired me was a movie called uh, The Changeling with George C. Scott. And uh, uh, that was, I, I believe, 1980, 1981, and, um, which was a you know, really good, uh, good film. Well, you're getting a lot of people talking about you saying you're amazing. Uh, well, yeah, they, it, you know what? I, we have such a great, uh, great following and great friends and, it, this was more to entertain them and, and uh, um, you know, bring them together. I feel like I have a whole family that's out there, you know, of 
of friends that are, you know, just, um, just, you know, part of the circle. And so I wanted to share this with them as well as the, the newcomers that come in and hopefully they'll be part of the next pe feature that we do. Now this is your first movie, right? Uh, no, no. My first, the very first film that I did was, uh, a film called second dance and it was, um, it went to Sundance and it was uh, a short film and also went to uh, the Berlin Film Festival. And it was about suicide. It was kind of like a Twilight Zone. And then I did a feature called Dominion, which was with uh, Brian James. I don't know if you know Brian James and uh, um, Tim Thomerson, uh, you know, that were uh, part of that character actors from, from years ago, as well as Brad Johnson. And uh, then I, I did a, another film called the it was a feature called the art of a bullet with uh leif garrett and um and then some short films you know after that and then i i decided that i wanted to do a, a horror film and i ended up doing writing a screenplay called uh the hatred and we did a little short film called hush which went on to uh win 34 awards and um you know it's uh it's been quite a it's been quite a, a a journey you know the and the people that i've shared it with you know, I have friends of mine that have supported me over the course of time through production and and um for all this they came together like a, like a family and um they were with me from the short they were with me for you know through most of the films and then this last film we came out and they and most of them came last night so it's uh well, me, it's been a good journey let me back up a minute yeah so you actually did a movie with Leif Garrett. Yeah. How was that? It was good. You know, Leif is uh, was an underrated um, actor. And, uh, he, you know, he was in a few movies of the past here that uh, people may or may not remember him. But he, it was, this was a dramatic piece for him. And it went overseas. It never made it out to see the light of day here in the United States. But it, it made it overseas. And... Uh, I was very proud of him. You know, he did a small cameo in Dominion, and we had talked uh, during the course of that, and we remained friends. And then I just called him up one day, and I said, hey, I'm doing this movie. I think this might be right for you. I want you to read it. And uh, he called me back the next day and said, dude, I want to do this. So, uh, you know, we, we got involved in it, and it was, uh, it was a good experience. Are you able to read what people are saying? And... Um, I'm reading it. Uh, Brooklyn Strong, you know, to see John McGowan, a good friend of mine uh, from when I grew up in, uh, you know, in New York and Deborah Updike and uh, Rob Harper and, uh, you know, some of these people that and these people who have been my cousin, Mary McCain Stone, they were all been, um, you know, supportive of me through the course of it. Uh, Matt Solomon, who's a who's a director that I you know did a little film that I went to go see, and we I was actually at a, at a film festival and Matt's uh, film had played there, and I said you know I'd love to uh, try to see if I could help you out at some point. So, you know, there's a lot of a uh, lot of people that are joining in here that it's great to see. It's it's kind of humbling, you know, to uh, to get to get that support. Um, when you put together the hatred. How did you get uh, the people to get involved that you got involved with it? Um, you know, when I did the short film, uh, to say hello to Mooch Lawrence, another friend of mine from school. When we did the short film, um, it went, you know, we shot it in, uh, in a day. And then when the feature came around, I had given the script to Malik Akkad, who is the producer from, uh, from the, the uh, Halloween franchise. And uh, he saw the short film as well and read the script and decided this was something that, you know, he wanted to, uh, you know, he wanted to get involved in. So we sat and we talked for a while about, you know, how to approach it. Tommy Harper, who's uh, been a friend of mine for many, many years, um, who was a PA starting out, he ended up producing a little film called Star Wars, The Force Awakens. You know? <laughs> and um, he, um, he helped me get this together for it. And uh, we started the journey with uh, Malik and then started making some, you know, some ideas about what cast members we wanted, who we wanted to uh, fill in those roles. And um, I just, you know, I just started going out looking for some of the characters that uh, would fit in place for this. Um, 
I know that when we went for uh, uh, the four girls, we wanted to try to find four young ladies that were smart, you know, um, that would uh, be cap, you know, captivating on film. And um, Sarah uh, Davenport, who read, you know, for uh, Reagan for the uh, main role, was amazing in her uh, audition. And um, she, I knew right then and there that we wanted to have her. And uh, then Alicia Wainwright, who came in and did a great job. And we continued with her and she tried different things and that worked out. And um, Gabby Bourne, who uh, was kind of cynical in the sense of the way that I am, you know, and uh, loved the fact that uh, she took over the reins of, of the way that I am in a sense, because I think that character is something that I, I wrote about myself. And then um, we had uh, Bailey Corman, who I didn't know that Bailey, Bailey was related to John, to Roger Corman. Uh, but Bailey did a great job on, um, uh, you know, in the, in the role itself and uh, surprised me. And then, of course, we had a number of actresses that read for the little girl. In fact, one of the things that happened with... Uh, um, with this role for the little girl, someone came in and read, and I was uh, I was so so charged up about her doing the role, and then her mother said, "No, we have to, uh, you know, I have to go back to uh, the East Coast." And I thought maybe you know she could have a a, a babysitter or or at least a family member here, and uh, you know they they couldn't do it. But then I was so surprised when we got Shay, and Shay Smolik is an incredible little actress who, mind you, when we were on set, would take a moment and go off to the side, prepare for herself using sense memory, and uh, come back and be so well prepared for the role and for that moment it's, itself. It was uh, great. And she had different ways of preparing, whether it was uh, a moment for, um, you know, for a, a sensitive uh, time, uh, a, a dramatic moment, or, or even something that was light. She took her time on each spot, so... Uh, I've got to give, you know, credit to those actresses. And, of course, you know, Andrew Devoff, who is, uh, you know, who's well-known in that genre. He's, uh, uh, he's an amazing actor who um, came well-prepared, had a, a, an incredible uh, uh, accent, German accent. And then, um, you know, there's a moment in the scene in the, in the movie when uh, Andrew was talking to the sheriff and he was kind of screwing up his lines and... Uh, he punched the post that's, that he's standing by and the, the, the crew members were backing off and nobody knew what to do. And, mm-hmm. and I just went up and I said, Andrew, use this, man. Take advantage of this and, and, and uh, use it in your dialogue so you could pummel the, 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 this, this guy with your, with your words. And um, he, not only did he just dive back into it, but he, he went off script and used some German uh, a German line that he said said in German, and then went right back into the English. And I got to tell you, I I was so happy that uh, I let him run with it at that time. So uh, he and, and Amanda Wiss and David Naughton, two friends of mine, that I never expected them to say, "Yeah, we'll do it." Amanda, who is you know in uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, mm-hmm. uh, I met. We, you know, we, I wrote the script at Starbucks, believe it or not, and then started uh, seeing her there. We talked and she said, uh, what are you doing next? And I said, I have this little movie, but there's, there wasn't a role for her that was a, a bigger role because she's, you know, a well-known actress. And she said, Mike, I, whatever you got, I'll do it. I'll do it for you. And David Naughton the same way, you know, David Naughton, who is in American Werewolf in London. So um, we were fortunate to be surrounded with all those people. And, uh, you know, I always say try to surround yourself with people that are smarter than you. And uh, it looks like they uh, they really pulled it off. Yeah. I think... Amanda, Go ahead. Amanda, she's going to be here uh, for Sharefest, where I live. And this is the first year that Robert England's ever been to Lexington, Kentucky. Yeah. And they yeah. keep Night Round Elm Street thing where they've got all kinds of different people from Night Round Elm Street. And she's one of the main guests for it. So that's going to be interesting going to that. And uh, never met Robert England before. So I'm, I'm excited yeah. to do that. I, don't I actually do worked with. Cause I live in yeah. The, yeah. I live in the middle of nowhere. So I, I actually. Uh, 
I worked with Robert England on a TV series called Downtown uh, a while back. Um, uh, Michael Nouri was in it, and uh, Robert England and a number of other actors. Mar Marisha Hargate, who's I think in uh, Law and Order, <clears throat> and um, yeah, he's a he's a Robert's a great a great actor, you know. I think we lost him. Are you still there, Michael? Michael. Michael. Uh, you all hold on one second. I've lost him, okay? Uh, he's gone offline or something. I don't know what's happening here. Hold on. Let me try to see what's going on again. If y'all can just hold on, okay? Uh, we got we got a little uh, got disconnected there, but um, hey, it happens as live. What can you do, right? <laughs> yeah. You just keep um, yeah, you keep moving. Uh, you know, I did want I did want to tell you about John Connor, our DP, who is uh, um, a, an amazing talent. You know, D John John uh, started out doing one of the most difficult jobs in the film industry that a lot of people don't realize. Um, he's a, he was a focus puller. And, um, you know, if your movie has great sound, great picture, and it's out of focus, it ruins everything. And John worked on a movie called The Revenant. He's worked with Tony Scott over the course of time. And uh, he came up with some wonderful ideas for our film. And uh, if you remember in the short film, when, the, um, when she looks under the bed and sees the girl on the top as well as the bottom. Well, that's all in one shot. And we had used a, a, a piece of equipment called the DC slider, which we had the camera on and it would go from top to bottom. And you have to keep the same speed, the same frame and um, making sure that you're not moving anything, you know, for that. And we had a remote for that and the remote broke. And John just decided I'm going to do it on my own. And, uh, uh, and it worked. And then he, we perfected it a little bit for the feature. And he, he did an amazing job on that and his lighting. He's just, uh, um, you know, he's, a, he's not only is he a, a close friend, but he's a very talented uh, technician and a cinematographer that uh, is getting ready to explode. So uh, he and I are actually going to do another film together, uh, which we uh, will be doing in Iceland next year. Now that you've uh, done a horror movie, and you've done all these other type of genre movies. What is your favorite genre to do? Um, I think um, it's like kind of like a thriller, sci-fi thriller, I think, is uh, what I want to gear myself towards. That's the next one. I mean, one of my favorite films is John Carpenter's The Thing and, um, and Alien, you know, Ridley Scott's Alien. So I think that's something that I want to uh, s start following. And uh, this next movie that we're doing called Keblovic, which takes place in Iceland uh, in an in a, uh, Air Force bunker is uh, um, somewhat in the same vein as, as the, uh, the movie Alien, the original Alien, and uh, John Carpenter's The Thing. Nice. So yeah. a little bit of horror mixed with sci-fi, huh? Yeah, and, and, not so, you know, that's, and that's the thing with, with this film. I don't think I really considered, I mean, I didn't want to go far over in horror with uh, blood and guts, you know, and, and uh, I think this is more, you know, the hatred's more of kind of like a, a, a thriller, you know, like a midnight movie. I mean, we weren't reinventing the wheel by any means, but, you know, it's a haunted house. And if you follow along, to me, you know, the girls weren't talking about sex. They weren't drunk. They weren't, you know, they weren't doing the things that, you know, you see in some films. They were just uh, smart women that um, get involved in this. They go to, they go to spend the night, uh, at this house where they're invited to settle their friend in who's getting a, you know, is getting a, a job with her professor. So, you know, I, I, some people didn't, didn't quite get it and other people did. And, you know, as a filmmaker, you have to have thick skin because, you know, there's some nasty things that are said about the movie and then there's some wonderful things. And uh, what I think um, what helps me the most to get by are the support from my friends, the ones that have chimed in here while we're watching it all the ones from where I grew up in Brooklyn, New York, and from 
upstate New York uh, in Ithaca and Shermansburg, and also my friends here in California. But, you know, I also have a lot of friends in, in Budapest, in Korea, when I've traveled over, overseas that are actually here. There's a couple of friends from Korea that are watching this right now. So, um, you know, it's their, it's their support and their words when they get the movie. That's, that, that's what I think makes it for me. And uh, that's who I try to entertain. Yeah, I've seen, uh, before we started, I was reading some stuff, and uh, I've seen where Amazon, people on Amazon were ripping it apart. And I was like, you know, some of the main things they ripped it apart about were that, like you said, you weren't reinventing the wheel, and uh, there was no nudity. There wasn't a lot of blood. Yeah. So it's kind of like do a horror movie, stereo movie, whatever you want to call it. There's always a catch-22. Either yeah. there's too much blood and too much nudity, or there's not enough or any. So it's like a catch-22. So it's kind of hard to really yeah. make everybody happy. Well, said, you know? Yeah. I I think what, what, what ends up happening is um, they have a preconceived notion about, you know, the look of a film. And um, they they just want, you know, they, they're they disappointed in what they they originally wanted instead of watching the film for what the film is. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's uh, it's sad to say that, you know, people have opinion. I mean, we, you know, there are some, some people uh, judge the, the movie from just seeing the trailer. And um, it's unfortunate. But, but once again, you know, I, I can't live by their words. I live by the words of, of the people that uh, I want to entertain and mm -hmm. um, the people who've supported the film, my friends over the course of time, you know, and, and there's a, there's a lot of people that worked with, um, with me on the short film that um, were able to pull things off in the last second. And we became friends. Um, I had uh, two, uh, two, one of, one, one of, um, you know, two of the friends of mine that worked on there, these two guys that I met on a movie that I worked on a Tom Cruise movie called Valkyrie uh, it was Andrew Fortunato and, and uh, Jake Borowski. And the two of them, Andrew was, was with me on the film, creating the, uh, the television sequence when the girl was watching television in the short film. And he stuck with me, you know, through that. And those are the people that I think that are important for this, uh, you know, for uh, when you're making a film and you want to surround yourself with not only people that are smarter than you, but also people that uh, support you in a way that elevate you to try to get to the next level and uh, try to give a boost to the genre. And, you know, the genre, the horror genre is like 31 flavors. You could like aliens, you could like monsters, you could like uh, mummies, you could like, uh, um, you know, vampires. There's just so many, you know, different uh, flavors, so to speak. Yeah, I mean, and uh, with that saying... Uh... Will there be a sequel? Um, you know, I, I, I can't answer that. And that's, that depends upon, you know, the interest of uh, the audience. If the audience, uh, I, I, you know, I wish we had a lot more money to make the movie. You know, people don't realize there's a battle when you um, are trying to make a film. There's a battle, <coughs> excuse me, when you are making it. And then there's a battle afterwards. And, you know, if, if we have enough support, and, um, you know, maybe somebody wants to reach out, <coughs> excuse me, and, and um, support it. You know, I would, I'd be up for it. The horror we'll genre, see. like you said, the horror genre is wide open. You know, with, uh, I know it's a big budget movie, but it this last weekend on, <clears throat> on the 8th broke all records for a horror movie in a weekend. Yeah, you know? yeah. It, it, it's amazing that a story that come from a TV movie to now, you know, being a big budget movie in Hollywood, you know, it'd be like, uh, uh, paranormal activity for the biggest yeah. ever for a horror movie, you know, and that being an R movie too, or something like that, I think is what it was. I mean, it, all it does is break the, you know, break it open for more horror movies to come in and start, uh, you know, doing more stuff because that's what well, right, a lot of the big budget movies are in Hollywood nowadays mm -hmm. are really not that great. You know, you see, you see all the time where uh, a movie goes to the movie theater and then three months later it goes straight to DVD and you go, mm -hmm. 
You know, I mean, it's that quick. You know, like mummy movie was, if you will. So now it's yeah. on, it's, I don't know, you know, just came on Blu-ray and, v, and the VOD. I mean, there's a lot of movies mm-hmm. like that. You know, you think to yourself, well, this is going straight to DVD and video. Why didn't it go to the movie? Or this, you know, goes to the movie, and you're like, they don't make hardly anything, you know? Yeah. Well, you know, uh, people always say you know, it's, it's Hollywood, but, you know, not a lot of films are made in Hollywood. And it's uh, independent filmmakers or studios. Sometimes studios have the right, you know, the right notion of what they're doing, and sometimes they don't. But, um, you know, uh, I think what happens is, you know, people like uh, or production of companies like Blumhouse has done an incredible job about nurturing um, filmmakers and getting the right uh, uh, films out there and um, entertaining the audience in such a way. And they've done it, you know, on a smaller budget. You know, they've we, we've never had I mean, my budget was like uh, probably one sixteenth of any of those uh, uh, films. But uh, I think, you know, when you're. When you're guided by that, you know, and you're able to get through there, uh, I think that they're doing the right thing. You know, there's a friend of mine, uh, Adam Robotel, who just did Insidious 4, which looks incredible. <clears throat> and I have a, a good friend who's a still photographer on that who um, did some incredible images. He actually worked on the Texas Chainsaw reboot um, a while back. So his name is Justin Lubin, who's a still photographer. <clears throat> so, excuse me, but... Like I said, I think, you know, Blumhouse has a, a, a great feel for these films and also a great support for the filmmakers themselves to let them get their voice out. And that's what I think is important when you're allowed to let a filmmaker out there. Sometimes, you know, you don't get a chance to make the movie that you want to make. You know, sometimes you're limited on time or money or, you know, or whatever other uh, pitfalls that uh, you come across. But, you know, we... We had a lot of those, but we pulled through, and it is what it is. Patriot, mm-hmm. you had distribution, right, for the movie? I'm sorry? You're, the movie came out uh, with distribution, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's through Lionsgate? Yeah, it started out with uh, um, through uh, uh, Anchor Bay, and Lionsgate owns Anchor Bay. So they, uh, they picked it up. We, you know, we went out to make the movie. We ended up doing it uh, Union and shot here in town, but we didn't have a lot of, a lot of time. You know, when you, um, you shoot a movie in California, um, you don't have a lot of time to, uh, to make it. If you're, you know, depending on, on, you know, how many days that you can shoot, where you can go, if you're traveling and moving around. So we, you know, we, I had a, like I said, I had a very talented crew, a union crew that was uh, that stuck by me. But um, unfortunately we didn't have as much as we would, want and uh, sometimes poverty breeds creativity so uh, um it uh you know it's a to me it was the first run out to do a, a film like this and i had some great people that surrounded me and hopefully we'll get a chance to do something else uh, in the near future so which i have, think go ahead so did you have distribution before the movie was made or after the movie was made uh it was it was before you know, the, uh, but, you know, you never know exactly where it's going to go, if they're going to hold on to it or if they're going to put it, give it a theatrical or if it's going to be on, um, you know, DVD and VOD. So um, we weren't I wasn't even thinking about that, you know, because what I was thinking about was trying to get it, trying to get it done, get through the day. And, um, you know, it's kind of like being a, a, in a military operation of taking that hill. And each day is, you know, you're moving closer and closer to getting to hell. Some days, you know, you, you lose a battle, but uh, you want to win the war. And um, you got to have a good team behind you. So how's it gone so far since it's been out for the last week? Um, it's, it's done, you know, it's done well as far as uh, um, the people who've seen it who get it and they like it. And uh, I, I think, you know, like I said before, I think if you if you watch the movie and you pay attention to it, and you're not looking, you don't have a preconceived notion about it being blood and guts and you know stupid women because it's not that at all. And you know, I have four sisters, and they told me if I had made a movie with stupid women, blood and guts and sex, don't come back to New York. But if you don't think about that, you know, you um, and you're not looking for that, you know, then you get what you know what it is. And um, there are people who actually 
got the film and there are people who don't and it's okay. Everybody's entitled to their, to their opinion. And I, and I don't deny them of that. You know, they, 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 whether they like it or not, it's up to them. Now let's kind of go back a little bit, not about your movie, but about you. Now you're a musician, right? Um, you know, I, I play guitar and I, I'm in a band with, uh, some great guys from uh, upstate New York and, uh, we get together every, um, four years so to speak to play we played this uh, um not not long ago it's a bunch of friends from high school where i went to school in upstate new york in trumansburg and uh <clears throat> we uh the band is called mad dog 77 and uh it's a bunch of guys that i grew up with the band broke up in when i was in high school and then we formulated afterwards some members faded away and some came back and we brought more on so uh that's been a great relief for me. And those, and those guys have been a great support for me in, in the film industry as well. So, yeah, it's, uh, my friends, you know, it's blues and, and rock and roll. One of my friends, Sean, he has a band called Downtrend. He's uh -huh. in. And he said he watched it today. He said it was really cool. Uh, well, what's his name? Sean. Sean Tatz, is that his name? Yeah. yeah. Well, give him a thumbs up and tell him thank you as well for the support. It's uh, greatly needed. You know, and people, if you know, if they see the movie and they're able to put a, a review up on uh, on Amazon, that would help too because the studio gets to see you know what people are saying. There's a lot of people that are in there that that are you know that don't feel that way, which is okay. But most of the people who actually love the movie end up um, end up writing a great review, which helps the the cast, the film itself. It's on Amazon.com. Also, you know, Rotten Tomatoes to put, you know, a um, a review up there. Don Lynn Johnson wants to know, uh, uh, Mike, where can you she send info for your next casting? Um, you know, I mean, I I think uh, <clears throat> I think you just have to, you know, check on IMDB what uh, what we're doing next and there'll be and also you know if people want to follow me um, on Twitter my Twitter uh, name is at Mikey Kehoe that's what's at M-I-K-E-Y-K-E-H-O-E -E -E, and then Instagram is uh, at M-I-K-E-H-O-E-1-1 -E -E and I always put um, you know uh, little uh, blurbs about what, what's going on and what's happening and what we're about to do so I think that's, you know, that's what you can uh, keep an eye out for and get information. Sean, you're, you're right. He said he'd throw some comments, some positive comments in those places for you. Everybody needs to go and make some positive comments in these places. Because like I said, when I was at Amazon, I was reading, and everybody just really just being mean about it. And it's like, I think it's people are pros. You know, they just pro these things. People look back a lot, and I think that's a lot of what what happens with movies and music. That people just want to go on there and say whatever they can, whenever they can, because you know they feel like they can. And I don't think yeah, that they yeah. really, I don't think they really look at any of them and go, "Oh, well, you know, like you're being kind of mean," you know. Yeah, you I know, think, I don't want to discourage any. I don't want to discourage anybody for their opinion they should have their opinion of whether they like it or not it's just that um sometimes you know um they um they try to influence uh, other people another way i mean but the people who you know who love it try to influence people so i think everybody should have a voice you know and that's what this is this is all about but um when you tar tear apart the actors and and uh and the people who who put so much into it then it, it kind of bothers me you say what you want about me i i have thick skin i, I don't really i don't really care yeah, but you know, I was always told that good, bad publicity is good publicity because at least they're talking about you. I think I lost him again. No, I got you. you. I'm right here. All right. So anyway, but uh, you know, once again, I, I don't like to be negative. Uh, you know, I support the people who who have a voice, and uh, whether it's uh, um, against me or for me. It doesn't matter. Maybe we'll win them over on the next movie. Maybe, you know, maybe not. But, you know, uh, you, know you, you can't please everyone, so you got to please yourself. Mike, 
I was always told that bad, food, bad publicity is good publicity because somebody's talking about you. That's right. Yeah. That's so true. You know, uh, I kind of want to get back to something, though. So you grew up in Brooklyn? That's correct. I grew up, grew up in uh, Brooklyn, New York, in Flatbush. I went to uh, um, a little uh, Catholic grammar school called St. Jerome's. Um, I have uh, friends there that I still am friends with today that I talk to, some, you know, some, some of them on a daily basis. And uh, I lived there until I was about maybe 13 years old. And, um, you know, Brooklyn was a very, very, uh, I think, a, a very important thing for me during that time, especially with my friends, because uh, for some reason, those friends, you know, stick forever. And uh, I, uh, I remember them like it was yesterday. And I've lost some of those friends that have passed away, which really it affects me, even though it was a long time ago. But, um, you know, you go back there and you see where you used to live and, and um, you remember the times of when you were a child. They're just important memories that uh, these people have given and shared with me you know, during that time. And then I moved to uh, Ith upstate New York, just outside of Ithaca, in a place called Trumansburg during my high school years. And um, that was an even bigger influence on my, um, my film career and the friends that I I, I made there, you know, they've stayed with me ever since that time as well. And I go back there as often as I can, you know, I have family back there as well. And like I said, you know, being in the band, we go back once every four years to play for uh, a reunion, which grows every year. So um, the big crowd, but I, I think that, um, I think that, you know, friends are, are, you know, are so important in your life that you can reflect on. And I draw from in, from my films. In fact, the second dance, which you can actually see if you get a chance, second dance is on YouTube. You could look second dance in my name on it, Michael Kehoe. And um, when I was in New York going to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, um, I had two friends. One was uh, Jimmy Hayden and uh, another guy named Michael Kukul. And I was bartending uh, during that time, you know, at, uh, at night. And um, I, uh, Jimmy and myself and Michael were sitting there with the chairs up and the doors locked and we made a commitment to each other. We said, if one of us makes it, we'll pull the other two in. And then I moved to California and uh, Michael Kukul had passed away and Jimmy had told me about him. And then Jimmy had said, uh, hey, I, I was in a film with Robert De Niro and um, James Woods called Once Upon a Time in America. And I'm on Broadway with Al Pacino right now in a play called American Buffalo. And I said, I got, I got to see this. And he said, well, we're going to be in San Francisco. And then, um, unfortunately, about a month and a half later, I got a word that Jimmy had died. So I was pretty depressed about that. And um, I remember sitting home and thinking about, you know, when people get depressed and they decide to commit suicide or they do something to hurt themselves. You know, I, was, I wasn't considering that, but I was at that door and I decided to write Second Dance. And... Um, since I was a big fan of uh, The Twilight Zone, I wanted to make it somewhat like a, a Twilight Zone episode. And it was a tribute to my two friends who had passed away. But it also, you know, I had that element of Twilight Zone, that sci-fi uh, taste, and that's what drew me to that genre. So it all came down to one. But I think you get it. And that, like I said, that film uh, went to Sundance uh, years ago. But it still stands up for what it, you know, what it was. Two things. First of all, mm -hmm. lots of I'm out of Brooklyn. There's lots of What's great that? bands. There's lots of great bands that have come out of Brooklyn. Oh yeah. Um, me being like typo negative, being one of them, which is a great metal band from Brooklyn. There's yeah. a lot of great bands that come out of Brooklyn. Uh, second, mm -hmm. uh, I think that you should promote that movie more now than ever because suicide is such a big thing right now. There's yeah. so many people suicide um i believe wholeheartedly that uh when chris cornell died and um chester bennington from uh stone garden and uh lincoln park died yeah i think the news glorified glorified uh, suicide as being something that is um okay now i do believe that the mm -hmm. news has glorified it a lot more than what it is and uh 
perfect example of that in my feed the other day. Uh, a guy who had worked on The Walking Dead who put up a thing with this girl that was a big Walking Dead fan, left a five-year-old mm-hmm. uh, daughter behind and had killed herself. And yeah. She's a big Seth Finnegan fan. And mm-hmm. uh, she supposedly, I guess, hung herself too. And, you know, it, I don't think that people understand once you kill yourself, there's no coming back. You know? No, but, you, you know, I think, yeah. yeah. But uh, I think that, you know, you have to think also that, you know, these people are going through something that is, uh, is tragic in their own mind. And um, when someone says that suicide is a, uh, a selfish thing or, or, you know, it's a cowardly way out, they don't understand what that person's going through. You know, you can see someone when, when they have a, you can see someone when they have a broken arm, you can see the cast on their arm. But when there's something going on inside of them and you don't understand it, you know, to, um, to tear them apart, when people tear them apart, they have no idea what they're going through. And I think that's another thing that, you know, it, it gives you, this movie gives you a, a taste of, uh, um, the short film gives you a taste of uh, what could have been or what would be, you know, what would be. Um, I, uh, I, you know, just, I think it's something that needs to be talked about, you know. Um, I also Fair think, you know, you need to communicate with people and have friends. And once again, going back to what I said before, my friends from Brooklyn, my friends from Germansburg, and my friends from California, are probably, I, I feel like one of the, probably the most fortunate people in, on earth because the people that I have um, are just uh, just incredible to me. And they've been, you know, through thick and thin, thin with me when I was uh, going through second dance and I had my friends come over for it and try to turn around to something positive. And even when, you know, when you're writing and you're down and out and you don't, you know, people don't realize how long it takes to, to those that don't, you know, that write a script, no, but those that don't, you know, you, you take so long to put it together and you're starting to beat yourself up saying, I don't know if I can do it or not, you know, but, um, you know, going back to our film, uh, the hatred, you know, as I said, I had some incredibly talented people in that movie that, uh, did a, an amazing job and, um, need to be applauded. You know, we had our, our special effects, uh, uh artist, uh, Alex Popoff, who did an amazing job, on um, creating, helping create the character. You know, we, we did the makeup on, on the character, but we wanted something more, and he did it seamlessly. And so uh, that's why I think that when people watch this movie and they see these, the talent come out of these people, it's uh, just something that's, you know, something important for them to, to cheer people on. And that's why, you know, love the fact that, um, that these people win. You know, I had a, we had, we had a, a guy who's... Um, uh, who's our standby painter that was a friend of mine. One of the first films he did was a movie called Blade Runner, the original Blade Runner. And oh, yeah. Uh, I, yeah, I worked with him in, uh, um, in Michigan on Batman Superman. And he came out and created that room where he did the, uh, uh, the aging of Alice's room. So, um, you know, between him and Alex Popoff, when they both came through that, it's... Um, you know, it's it's that uh, you know that camaraderie and 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 that uh, the teamwork, which I always say, go team, go team. And on the set, it's the same way. We support each other. We we're a family during that time. We're also you know uh, um, a military operation, but we we charge through. So yeah, well, I uh, I want to tell you thank you for sitting down and talking to me. Uh, I uh, am very interested in uh, what you're doing. I think it's great that people are doing independent movies. You mm-hmm. know, uh, in this thing of time, you can do an independent movie with an iPhone. Right. And uh, people do movies with a budget of $10 and bubblegum nowadays, you know? That's so true, yeah. And uh, it doesn't matter if it's a D movie, C movie, B movie, or A plus movie. And then mm-hmm. at the end, my dreams that you know you don't want to sit there and just destroy them and say you know this ain't great you know this stuff sucks you know whatever because that's the reason why I don't do reviews for the most part because you know I don't feel like my opinion matters you know I'd rather sit and talk to somebody like you and get your opinion on what you're doing as opposed to well I'm going to give this you know uh, yeah or whatever like that. Yeah. Day, you know, 
Yeah, it's it's going overseas though. You know, um, we're we're still pushing it. And you know, as I said to you before, I've been fortunate to travel around the the world working on movies. I was in Budapest. Yeah, 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 Budapest. You know, your your voice is actually is important. It's important to me, and I think it's important to the other fans that out there because you give um, you give a voice to all of these people that are filmmakers that need it. And sometimes they never they can't afford a publicist and they can't afford to get that out there. They don't ha they may not have distribution. So I applaud you for you know where you are. I mean, you're you're way out in the country, aren't you? Yeah, I live in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, but but you know what? Uh, and I live, you know, right in Studio City, California. So I'm glad that we're friends. A and B. I'm just happy that you know I have you to uh, to to have that avenue to get the the information out. And the people that are watching and the people that are supporting this, you know, get to see you and what you do. So you know, you do you do have a voice, and 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 I I respect that, and I would love to hear more about you, and and I'll direct more people towards you. To uh, for interviews, I think my cast members would love to be part of that as well. So uh, I've actually called Amanda Wiss, and if she's watching, I'll let her know that um, you know you want to do a little uh, interview with her. But um, I'll you know take that to heart. You are important, and I appreciate what you've done for my film. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, you know, you 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 told me. Uh... There's some of the people that work with you, you know, like we're on the last, the last, um, the, last, the Force Awakens, right? Yeah, yeah, Tommy the Harper. Last Jedi. Yeah, the, yeah, Tommy I mean, Harper, yeah. That's my, you know, I remember being a kid, you know, and I never got to see none of the Star Wars movies in the theater. I didn't see any of them in the theater. And then, you know, when you mm -hmm. find out that he's making the prequels and then, you go and you watch the prequels and you watch the special editions and then, holy crap, you know, Disney bought it. Now we're going to get to see what happened at the end, you know. And, right. Um, to me, you know, that's amazing. And then you were talking about Halloween. And I'm, as I mentioned to you before, yesterday, Jamie mm -hmm. Lee Curtis just signed on to be on the new Halloween movie. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's you know, Ma Malik, who, Malik, who produced our film um, and took it from, you know, start to finish is producing that movie with uh, John Carpenter and uh, Jason Blum from Blumhouse. Blumhouse is doing the movie as well. Um, so, you know, um, I think I said earlier that Blumhouse is doing a great job in, uh, in their films and, and what they're going to bring to the audience. And I think they'll have a taste of that in there. So it's a good combination with all three, with Carpenter, uh, Akkad, and uh, Blumhouse. Well, it's just like Star Wars. I guess he just announced that... <clears throat> Hey, Abramson's coming back for episode nine now. Yeah, you know? yeah. So you get you get J.J. Abramson, then you then you get I can't remember who didn't list Jedi, but then oh my God, Han Solo's being done by Ron Howard. Yeah, you know what couldn't be better than if they were to get J.J. Abramson, Ron Howard, and George Lucas to do the do, to do number nine <laughs> right. together. I mean, that'd be like a yeah, well, that's from the God, you know? Right. And that's the beauty of this industry. It's like waking up on Christmas morning, you know, to these gifts that are opening up. So uh, I think there's a lot of surprises ahead with these new films. And, uh, um, you know, the audience should just, you know, enjoy them. Some are going to be spectacular, you know, um, and some are going to be little gems. 
And uh, um, I think you just got to enjoy them all and see what happens. Before we so, go, where can we <clears throat> reach out to you? But they want you to autograph anything, um, or do you have anything they want to say about anything? Yeah. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, as I said, I think I mentioned I'm on uh, on Twitter at, at Mikey Kehoe, M-I-K-E-Y-K-E-H-O-E. And then on Instagram, it's um, at M-I-K-E-H-O-E-1-1. So um, <clears throat> that's out there. And, you know, keep an eye on on the Facebook page, which, you know, my, my, my page is under Michael G. Kehoe. And uh, there'll be announcements there that will go out. And if there's anything changes or anything that goes up about the hatred will be on that page as well. And like I said before, if anybody's got something positive they want to say, they should put it up on, uh, on uh, Amazon.com or, or, or the Rotten Tomatoes. Are you uh, doing any appearances, any more appearances that you know of? Yeah, we're, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be in Philadelphia for a uh, screening of the hatred at the Philadelphia um, uh, First Glance uh, Philadelphia, which is uh, October 6th. So I'll be there for that. And, um, and I think we're also going to be playing at Zed Dead Film Festival here in Los Angeles. So uh, Los Angeles at the end of October and the beginning of October in Philadelphia. All right, man. Well, uh, All right. I, I, pre- I appreciate you doing this. And uh, I appreciate everybody that's been here to ask questions and stuff. Of course, you didn't get to... You all were moving pretty quickly through there, so we didn't get to say much to a lot of people. But know that he knows you said something. Yeah, and, um, I yeah you know, tried tried to mention as many as I could, but you know what? There's uh, the great thing um, <clears throat> is just uh, acknowledging these people who are supporting, and and I, I just appreciate uh, all their support, and also you know you like I said, you coming in there and opening this up to them, so. All right, Michael, man. It's been great talking to you. Um, I'll get you a link to this on uh, YouTube in about 10 minutes, okay? Thank you, my friend. Yeah, I'd share it with everybody. All right, man. Yep. Thanks for And I'll man. talk to you soon. Get the next, get, we'll get ready to get together on the next movie, okay? Sounds good. Okay, take care.